So where to from here? As again, we had this very upmarket, uh, upbeat couple of presentations, and I'm not all doom and gloom. There is an opportunity. But we asked why, can, why don't fishers move to correct public negative public perceptions of the industry that is creating a lot of this pressure, that is putting all this pressure on, on, on the industry, on management agents, on politicians. Unfortunately, no specific research has been undertaken into the inaction of the, the fishing industry. However, from research that's been done before and from talking to fishers, the general response is that they lack the financial capacity to address those perceptions. Personally, I don't think that's the, the real reason behind it. Because why can farmers draw upon draw, draw themselves together, but not fishermen? Some have said it's simply that they don't assert themselves, they're not in, in that mindset. And I would actually suggest that it's more the nature of those who choose to be fishermen. Fiercely independent souls choose the profession very simply because they don't enjoy having interaction, having to have interaction with others. The nature of the work places them in isolation and they're unused to relying on other people. Farmers, by contrast, exist fence by fence with their neighbour and are known to share machinery and tasks when they need to. That sets expectations of, and comfort levels with collaboration on common causes and issues. Fishermen don't, they aren't in that position. They really put themselves in that position by choice. The nature of them, combined with a small percentage of the working population they represent, creates a severe limitation I believe on their ability to drive strategic development, change or even acknowledgement of the challenges they face. The reduction in the size of the commercial fishing industry combined with sustainability pressures and apparent ability to organise nationally now see it in a state of simple existence rather than of an industry that has the capacity to create support and to drive change. However, collaboration may be the option for securing the future of the industry, be that with a broader community, governments through co-management, or perhaps even in some form, environmental organisations focused on the sustainable use of our resources. And I'd even go further to suggest it's not going to be any one of those, but a combination of them. So, it brings me back to the question of who is in control of the Australian's fishing industry. It's pretty clear, I believe, it's not the fishermen, whether they want to be or not. The ongoing push for conservation at all costs may be steering the ship of our fisheries in a very finite direction. In fact, those who are most likely to be in control of the future of our fisheries are the Australian public. Through the political pressures they bring to bear, but they don't necessarily actually realise it. To me, that's a fairly scary concept. Public response to information disseminated by NGOs and, and other aid organisations and repeats questions of sustainability and concern over practices of our fishing industry without necessarily knowing the full story or perhaps having the correct information as was outlined by Robert and Tony. Often the information distributed by NGOs uses international rather than Australian fisheries data to develop messages about environmental sustainability, not recognising the ecological effectiveness of fisheries management in Australia and the general responsible, respon generally responsible nature of the industry. Australians need to be asked to decide if fish is to be the, one of our future food and protein sources and one in the mix of our primary industries, or are we happy to lose it altogether? I suggest the majority of Australians don't even realise the precarious nature of this industry. The challenge is to publicly position the industry as sustainable now and into the future. And fishermen have the ability and continue to address issues of efficiency and sustainability in the ways in which they operate. However, I suggest as again, it's the nature of fishermen that identifies few of them have the capacity to engage with the world of environmental management and conservation at the level needed to address public perceptions. Their ability to be resilient, resilient is now at the tipping point and they're now vulnerable to external pressures which may see them slowly disappear. However, as suggested by FIDC's Resource Working Group's final report, while input into the management and future of Australia's fisheries is required at the grassroots fisher level, it's also essential to have top-down approaches that command community attention and align publicly resource allocation expectations. Such a process needs to 
should provide surety not only for commercial fishers but also for recreational fishers and those concerned about the conservation of our aquatic environment and the sustainability of current and future activities. Bear in mind I'm not just talking about wild catch, I'm talking about aquaculture as well here. The future of Australia's fishing industry is currently in the hands of, if anyone, a public guided by subjective and in some cases incorrect information in regards to the Australian circumstance. But it's the responsibility of us all in government and management, not just the industry or NGOs, to decide and guide the future of Australia's fishing industry. On that note, say there, there is an opportunity to pursue other options. Thank you. <laughs>